This is, without a doubt, the highest quality all-in-one diesel heater I have ever touched. It's solid stainless steel, the handles are made of metal, and the fuel cap actually seals. It costs a lot more than the cheap Amazon specials, but it's all sealed in this bougie expensive box. And inside this box is a tiny diesel engine that will get caked in soot. So the $300 question is, did Bouge RV just sell us the world's most expensive disposable heater? Before I even put a drop of fuel in this thing, we're gonna find out. We're taking it apart right now. Now, why am I so obsessed with this? Because a diesel heater isn't a luxury, it's a critical piece of gear. When it's 20 degrees out and you're trying to get warm in your minivan or your tent, you need a dry heat. Propane heaters dump a gallon of water into the air for every gallon of fuel they burn, you end up wet and cold. This heater promises that dry 5,000 watts or 17,000 BTU blast of heat. So what? That means you're not just warm, you're dry. Your gear dries out, your windows are clear, and you don't wake up in a damp, miserable cave. That's the experience promised by this Bouge RV diesel heater. But that experience only lasts if you can maintain this machine. Bouge RV did send this over for me to test, but they know the rules. We're being honest, data-driven, and we're voiding the warranty first. Let's get into it. My first impressions under the hood are not bed. This fuel tank is a custom fuel tank. I'm going to show you on the back one thing that's crazy about it. But another thing is if you can see these little plus signs throughout the design, those are baffles so that when you're traveling with this in your vehicle, it's going to prevent sloshing of that diesel fuel back and forth. One feature that almost every diesel heater I've ever tested doesn't have is a fuel filter. And this one, if you look right here, I don't wanna put my finger in there because I'll mess up the focus, but right in there is a fuel filter pre-chamber. And then if you look at that hose, it has a little wire going through it. So there's actually quite a few higher quality items inside of this thing that you normally don't see on those cheaper $100 units. That fuel pump is also rubber mounted in a shock absorbing mount, which is gonna make this thing extremely quiet when it's in operation. Most of the other diesel heaters will have that really thin green nylon tubing, and this tubing right here feels very substantial. And I briefly mentioned this fuel cap earlier, but this is a truly automotive grade quality fuel cap. This is just like what you would get in a car that still has a cap. The benefit of a cap like this is you can put fuel in it and when the fuel inside cools off, it will allow pressure to enter the fuel tank, but it won't allow any pressure to exit the fuel tank, making this the safest design that I've tested so far for one of these fuel tanks. And moving over to the other side, this is that second part of the fuel tank that I absolutely love. This is rated as a five liter fuel tank, and it would only be a four liter or probably a four and a half if this little extension wasn't here. This thing is about four or five inches under the main combustion chamber, adding that extra volume. Now, something I'm not truly convinced I'm a fan of just yet is this threaded exhaust outlet. The only reason I am not yet convinced of this is that you may end up reliant on this one exhaust pipe. The reason that can be a problem is on several of my other installs with diesel heaters like this, I have swapped out the exhaust pipe for something longer. So for this one, that means I'm going to need something that can join to the end of this, or I'll end up having to cut this so that I can use just the end point. And then my final option, if neither of those two worked, would be to replace the overall 
outlet pipe with something that's a little more universal. Now, this is not a showstopper by any means, but one thing you want to know about these exhaust pipes is if you run one of these heaters for extended periods, I'm talking potentially a year or two, you may start to get a little bit of corrosion on this pipe, which could cause a little bit of leaking and things like that. We want to make sure we're able to replace this if needed. And so I'm looking forward to see what kind of additional options Bouge RV provides with this diesel heater outlet. Maybe this is becoming more standard and maybe there are already other options out there. Let me know in the comments. The remainder of the internals are pretty standard. This is your combustion chamber inlet. You can see it goes all the way around to right here. Once that air goes in, it's inside of the combustion chamber. In here, you will have a glow plug, all of the standard things inside of a diesel heater that might eventually need some servicing. Once the combustion takes place, everything exits through this exhaust. Inside of this chamber is also a heat exchanger. All of the air related to the combustion process enters here, exits here. But the air related to what you get in your comfort inside of either your vehicle or wherever you're using this device enters here and exits here. Your heat exchanger intake is covered with a small threaded baffle and inside is your Ooh, that feels very nice. This is a sealed bearing fan. This pulls all the air into the heat exchanger. This is also the component that makes the most noise when these diesel heaters are operating. So the benefit is it does have that whooshing sound of airflow, but some of these heaters can get pretty loud and this is where the sound comes from. I really like to see that this has an XT60 input. This makes it very universal. There are quite a few power stations out there in the market that have a direct to XT60 output. And the reason that's important is this is 12 to 24 volts. A lot of times these diesel heaters will pull up to almost 200 watts on startup and that will cause any of your standard power stations to blow the circuit. And fortunately for us, I saw that the AC adapter or wall adapter for this heater is only rated at 150 watts. So that might indicate that this thing is going to pull a lot less power and it may not end up tripping some of those standard power stations. I'm going to definitely test that later in the video. Okay, so we've seen all these premium parts the baffled tank, the quiet pump, and that great XT60 port. But what about the real question? The $300 question I asked at the beginning of this video. Is this thing serviceable? The glow plug, that's what eventually fails on every diesel heater. On this unit, it's right here. You can clearly see the access point. It's not buried. It's not glued in. It's designed to be replaced. That's a pass. Next, the combustion chamber. That's what clogs with soot. On this, you can see the housing right here. It's not riveted shut, it's bolted together, so you can absolutely take this thing apart. So the answer to the big question is, no, this is not a disposable heater. It's 100% serviceable. That is a massive win. And it means this thing is actually built to last. So we've seen inside and it's confirmed this is not a disposable toy. It's built like a tank. But how does this thing actually perform? Let's put it back together and get some fuel in it and find out. So now that we put this thing together, let's get it going. Hopefully the thing still works now that I've thoroughly voided the manufacturer's warranty. So this diesel heater is topped off. Let's go ahead and get it set up so we can get it running. For me, step one is of course gonna be installing this exhaust hose, mainly so I can just keep the exhaust from blowing on me while I'm using the device. There we go, we got it going. The heater, of course, came with a muffler. However, I have found in my experience that these mufflers don't really make a significant difference, at least not from my perspective. Now, they will say to leave this horizontal because there's a little weep hole right there. And as moisture starts to accumulate, that's the place where they want it to be able to drip out when it's not in use. We have three options for powering the Bouge RV diesel heater. Number one is your wall outlet, which goes from wall to 12 to 24 volts. Number two is straight off of a 12 or 24 volt battery. And then finally, we have essentially the same thing, but this one is with one of those car style outlets. 
The bottom line is whatever power we're pulling out of the device or wherever we're getting our power source from, the input into this diesel heater is between 12 and 24 volts. This is the one that I am most excited about. Most of these diesel heaters will not work on any of these car style outlets. And in fact, this one says that it pulls 150 watts of ignition power for requirement, which for this is about 12 and a half amps. Most of these outlets are rated at 10 amps. I want to give it a try anyway, because I would much rather use the 12 volt outlet than drop down the power from its AC inverter. Because inside of most power stations, you have 40, 60 volt batteries, and then that AC outlet will reconvert that voltage back to 12 or 24 volts. We don't want to waste that power in increasing and decreasing the voltage if we can just go directly in. I'm going to start by plugging in my sockets. Let's see if I can turn on this thing just by pushing one of these buttons. So I was a little surprised I wasn't able to get this 12 volt socket to register, but right now I am registering with the wall outlet. I'm going to try that one more time with this one just to see maybe it was a fluke or maybe this already knows it's not able to put out the required amount of power. Let's find out. So I have confirmed that this 12 volt outlet is not working for the diesel heater. It could possibly be that this is regulated to something like 12 volts exactly, or something just below the minimum requirement for the heater. One clue I have is that the output voltage from this AC inverter is 12 volts and 15 amps. So it's probably the outlet from that Blue Eddy. We'll try another power station here in a minute. And now that we have everything set up, finally, let's go ahead and get this diesel heater running. One thing that is initially quite interesting is that we have an accurate time here. It's about 3.15 in the afternoon. In fact, it's actually 2.15 because we had daylight savings time today, but normally with these kind of diesel heaters, the clock resets every time I turn them on. But we've got this thing started, let's crank it up. And what I wanna do is just give it a chance and it says it's getting 13 volts get it going and as this is cranking up it did go to 65 the wattage here is climbing but surprisingly i haven't heard the fuel pump yet so it's a little odd to me that the glow plugs are already starting the glow they're hitting 133 140 152 60 Wow, so we are hitting a solid 183 watts. So that outlet or that rating on the power brick is potentially a little off. 180 watts is basically the same amount of power that I see from all of these diesel heaters. The display here is actually pretty informative. It's showing that I have it set on 5,000 watts of heat output. The air blower is blowing. I can just barely hear it blowing right here. The ignition electrodes are still on. And there goes that fuel pump. I don't know if you guys can hear that. So I can certainly hear that fuel pump tapping in there. Not as quiet as I would have expected, but it's still priming. And so usually what happens is these pumps are pretty loud. And then once they get primed up, they quiet down quite a bit. And so we're going to find out in a few minutes here, how does that pump respond to being completely full? And then if it is louder than I expected, potentially it is because I opened the box earlier, but not likely because I didn't really mess with the fuel pump or any of its connections while I was in there. So we have definitely pulled up to 210 watts. That means that using any of those outlets that I showed you earlier, would absolutely not be possible. And now the fuel bump has gotten much quieter. I think this thing is ready to start blowing some hot air any moment now. I'm actually pretty excited to hear or feel how much hot air comes out of this thing. And there it goes right there. We've got our initial combustion. I can feel just a little bit of warmth. One thing I'm pretty uh, surprised with is normally that first ignition, I'll see a huge cloud of smoke coming out. I don't know if they pre-burn the system because usually on those cheaper, cheaper diesel heaters, you'll have to pre-burn the system. You'll get all of that smoke and grit out. They say to do that for about an hour, but right now I'm not experiencing any of that, that massive cloud of smoke. This thing is performing pretty well so far. 
and I'm starting to get some warm air out of this outlet. And I know I emphasized that fuel tank, that fuel pump sound a little bit ago. Um, I am not hearing any fuel pump sound, but when I touch the machine, I can feel the fuel pump ticking in there. So very interesting that it's essentially completely isolated. I can feel the hammering motion of that flow, but I definitely cannot hear anything over just the sound of the heater running. Now, one thing I do love about these heaters is if you have it set up right, maybe it's right outside your window or something like that, it does have a quality that kind of eliminates all the background noise. Something like this can absolutely put you to sleep if you're listening to it, especially when you start to get toasty warm, just like the air coming out of this thing is. Outlet air is very, very warm, feeling good. It's actually warming up my hands. I only put about one liter of fuel in here. And one thing a lot of people have had problems with with diesel heaters like this is, this is a 75 millimeter or just around three inch outlet a lot of people prefer the four inch outlets yes it's a wider hose but the theory is when you have these heaters running on full blast that the three inch hose can actually cause this to overheat inside but the four inch hose allows a lot more of that air that hot air to escape i haven't had enough experience to make a determination on this one but maybe i'll find out later in the winter as i put this thing to use i am running at that 5,000 watt maximum output currently and i'm pulling a pretty solid 90 watts this is the amount of power that this thing would pull all night long on 5,000 watts. So to run this heater on its maximum setting for an entire night, you would want at least a one kilowatt or 1,000 watt hour battery to make that happen. Now that I've seen how it performs on its maximum output setting, I'm gonna go ahead and dial it down to its minimum, let it run for a few minutes and see how much power we're pulling at steady state in minimum mode. So it looks like I've gone down to 17 watts. And while I give this a few more minutes just to, to see if it will pull any lower than 17 watts, because some of these diesel heaters will go down to about 10 watts, let me tell you about the app. The app is very simple, very good interface. It's actually the best diesel heater app that I've tried so far. A lot of the other ones are basically rebrands of the same exact uh, app. But one thing I am noticing, and unless I'm not accessing the features properly, there's no fan setting. So right now the fan is putting out, it's essentially automatically controlled based on the wattage or the, yeah, the wattage output. So like right now I'm at 1400 watts or 1.4 kilowatts. That setting is automatically controlling the fan. So I think I would like to be able to control the fan a little bit. There should be like a minimum and a maximum based on the output, but right now, there's no control for that. All right, guys, this AGTV gauntlet is done. We are out here in the real world, and I feel like we have some real world data. First, we proved that that 12 volt car socket is a hard no. That 210 watt startup surge is real, and it will fail every single time with one of these power stations. You have to use this AC adapter or a heavy duty XT60 port. Second, the performance is pretty solid. 90 watts on full blast after warm up is great, but the real story is that low setting. This thing just sips power, settling in at only 17 watts. The so what is that you could run this all night long on a tiny power station like this Blue Eddy Elite 30 V2 and barely make a dent in it. That is insanely efficient. And yes, I have had many other diesel heaters go down to around 10 watts. So there is something to consider there. You might get almost twice as much of a runtime on those lower consumption devices. However, 17 watts is already pretty substantial and yeah the app is clean but there is not that i saw any manual fan control that's a definite miss for bouge rv here but let's be honest all this data and numbers they don't mean a thing if this machine is just a sealed up disposable piece of junk this all-in-one diesel heater is 100 serviceable we proved in the studio that you can get to the glow plug and we also proved that you can get to the combustion chamber so to answer that $300 question I asked at the very beginning, no, this is not the world's most expensive disposable heater. It's the exact opposite. It's an investment. It's a piece of pro-grade gear that's actually built to last. But that's my final take now. Now that you've seen the guts 
and you've seen the real world performance data, is that premium price tag for this build quality a smart buy? Or would you rather gamble on buying three of those cheap Amazon specials and just throwing them away when they break? Let me know what you do in the comments and I will catch you guys in my next video.